In this video, you are going to learn how to make Pac-Man move around the maze using the arrow keys on your keyboard and make it so that every time he hits a wall, he stops uh, and so that he has to stay within the maze. Okay, so we need to make Pac-Man move. So to do that, we're going to click on the Pac-Man sprite and we see the script that we made earlier, which um, is what makes his mouth open and shut. Um, and if we press the green flag button, we will activate that script and you can see there goes his mouth. Uh, now we want him to move when we press that green button as well. So we can click on events. We can drag another when green flag is clicked, uh, sort of start block or hat as we call them. And then we can put another forever loop because we want him to continually move throughout the whole game. So forever he's gonna be moving and we want to say when he moves, we're going to make it so maybe he moves, um, let's try it just one step at a time. Let's press the green button, see what happens. And hey, there he goes, he's off, he's moving. Now I can't control his movement, I can't redirect him, and he's not stopping when he hits any walls, so obviously we've got a little bit of work to do. Um, also, I think he's moving a bit, a bit slowly. So if we just stop that, I'm going to move him back over here and let's change. Instead of moving one step every time it loops around, let's move two steps. So this should be twice as fast. So let's try again. Yeah, that's definitely quicker. Uh, I would say that that's a better speed. Um, so uh, why don't you just pause there and do what I've just done. So you need to get a when green flag is clicked hat put a little forever loop from the control items uh, and then put a move two steps block inside there. Okay, so hopefully now you've got um, a Pac-Man that when you press the green flag button, his mouth opens and closes and he can walk all the way across the screen. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is add a bit of directional control and to do that, we can use the when, and in this case it says space, but we can change that, but when a key is pressed event. So we get it from the events list, and we don't want the space key, but we would like, let's say, the up arrow. When the up arrow key is pressed, what do we want to do? Well, we want to send Pac-Man going upwards, um, and that's a motion control. It's all to do with how he's moving. It's changing direction and we're going to change um, direction by using the point in direction block and where it says 90 here if you click on that it shows you what that means that means 90 degrees which is to the right negative 90 degrees would be to the left zero degrees so this is sort of based on a bearing system uh, zero degrees would be up and 180 is down well we're pressing the up arrow so we'd like him to go up so we can just select that okay um, so if I run this now, I can press up and he changes direction, which is great. Um, I can't press any other buttons uh, because I haven't created the code for that. So at the moment he will just go up. He won't go right, he won't go left and he won't go down. So we need to add that functionality now. Now here's a quick tip. You could drag the pieces over individually again um, or you can right click on the top of your little blocks and press duplicate. So we've got a duplicate one here, um, which is not very useful because it's doing exactly the same, but we can just now very easily use these drop down arrows and change the options. So instead of it being when up arrow, we'll change to when down arrow key is pressed, point in direction down. And I can duplicate that again. And let's say when right arrow key is pressed, points to the right, and one more, let's duplicate, and when left arrow is pressed, point left. So if we run it now, I can go up, I can go right, I can go down, I can go left, I can go up again, and I can keep moving him around as much as I like, and it's starting to feel like a real game now. Um, however, we've got the obvious problem that he won't stop when he hits the walls. But let's just take a moment to pause where we are and why don't you update your sprite now so that in your game 
you've got the up, down, right and left control working. Brilliant, okay, so you should now be in a position where you can have your Pac-Man moving around, his mouth is open and closing, uh, and he's moving in the directions that you determine by using the arrow keys on the keyboard, which is fantastic. Um, but what we do need to do now is make it so that Pac-Man stops when he hits the walls. Um, now, this is where our little collision dot comes into play, because one of the things we can do in Scratch is we can uh, use the sensing controls on each sprite and each sprite can tell us whether it is touching another colour um, or if one of its colours is touching another colour somewhere else. That could be in a different sprite or it's on the stage. And if it is, then we can change the behaviour as a result. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So in order to do this, I'm just going to move these out of the way. And we need to play around with our a block which is controlling the motion because at the moment it just says forever just move two steps forward but we want to change this so that forever move two steps forward if you're not touching a wall that's what we're going to do so uh, the first thing of that little clue is we need an if block now ifs are under control because they control how the program is going to flow and uh, an if basically says, look, if a certain condition is true, then you can do something. Um, and that's kind of what we need here. So we're going to say, if something is true, move two steps forwards. Now, what is that thing that needs to be true? Well, we could say, if the little uh, purple dot we've got is on the black, then move forwards. Um, that would work because as long as that is on a part of the black then it will let us move so that would be a good way of doing it another thing we can use is we could use a, a not control and we could actually say if that little dot is not touching green then move forward um, and I think that's the one I'm going to use because sometimes especially when we've got dots and enemies uh, and bonuses on our on our uh, maze, Pac-Man's not always going to be on the black, uh, and yet we will want him moving forward. But there's only one condition where we don't want him moving forward, and that's where this is on the green. So we're going to say, if he's not on the green, then move forward. Otherwise, don't do anything, i.e. just stop moving. So in order to do all of that, we've taken a not block okay from the operators and I've dropped it into my if block here so if I just I'll take it out and show that to you again you'll see there's a diamond shape here in the if uh, so that means we can put a diamond shaped um, piece into there and under operators you'll find the not one so we drop that in and that itself has a little diamond so that one can also accept um, another diamondy shape and it happens that under sensing there are some diamondy shapes here which are the ones that we want and what we want to do is we want this one if one of the colors of our Pac-Man sprite is touching another color so we're going to drag and drop that one in now the colors we actually want um, are might be a little bit difficult to choose because our sprite is so small but we'll give it a go so click on the first color we're going to say well if the purple colour of our little um, obstacle checker. Okay, so I've had to move the mouse over to that. If that colour is touching green. So we're saying if this colour is not touching green, then you can move forward. Let's see if this works. So he's moving forwards and let's leave him and see if he stops when he hits a wall. And he stopped at the wall. Brilliant. Uh, but I can now move backwards. Can I go down? No. Can I go up? No. Can I keep going to the right? Will he stop at this wall? Yes, he does. Fantastic. So Pac-Man now is bound to stay within the walls, which is exactly what we wanted. So again, why don't you take a moment now and do what I've done? Um, so you need to get yourself a if block 
a not block and then the color is touching another color block dropped inside the not block and you need to specify the colors that you want are the first color is going to be the color of your little obstacle detecting block that's at the front of Pac-Man and the second color that you want is the color of your wall. If you're really struggling to get the color of your obstacle block what you can do is you can click on the grow button and you can grow Pac-Man until he's really big and then it's really easy to choose that color and then once you've done you can get the shrink control and shrink him back down again so that he fits inside the maze okay so that's like a, an extra little tip to help you okay next video we're going to um, add some little dots onto the screen that Pac-Man will eat up and that will sort of be where we got our scores from so the, the more dots he can get um, the more uh, the higher the score he will have.